Well, hey, this is Pastor Dean. Welcome to Velocity Church in Yorktown, Virginia. And thank you for watching us online today and this live stream. In just a second, we're about ready to start our service, but I just want you to know how much we appreciate you being here. And we want to minister to you. We want to help you to connect relationally, and we want to help you grow spiritually. And uh, so make sure during our service today, we have a host and he's here to uh, just to, uh, to pray with you and to uh, have a conversation with you and uh, just minister to you during the service. Be sure to leave us a comment, let us know you're watching and uh, leave us a prayer request if you like to. You can send us a direct message. You can chat one-on-one -on -one with our host and uh, we would love to connect with you and pray, be praying with you this week. We know it's not an easy time in our country and in our world right now and we need the Lord to be with us and we won't be here for you. So remember, uh, you matter to us, but more importantly, you matter to God. So thanks for joining us today and enjoy the service. about about another hot topic over the last few week, few weeks we've been talking about these topics people talk about inside and outside the church uh, week one we said this if Christians really love the church we said why is there so much hurt in the church week two we talked about about how we can trust the Bible and Johnny uh, taught that week and did a great job did a really good job uh, a third week we talked about can faith and science coexist that was really good I've had a lot of people challenge me about that online and so Social media. Uh, a fourth topic we talked about is, is abortion wrong. And that's when I went to Facebook jail for a few weeks. Facebook didn't like me talking about the truth of God's word. And I'm no longer in Facebook jail. So thank you for, thank you for your prayers while I was away in Facebook jail. Uh, last week we talked about is Jesus really the only way? And I want to encourage you all, if you have never have shared our messages or you want to go back and look at those, please do so. We have a YouTube page. Our church has this page. And uh, you can share this, our messages with people. And uh, so I want you to know, over these weeks we've been talking about these hot topics, that we've had over 10,000 people watch different parts of these videos in the last eight weeks. Between Instagram, between TikTok, between Facebook, that a lot of people have been watching these videos. And so the word is getting out. And, uh, but be praying. I I'm believing this. I'm believing God's stirring something in the heavenly realm. People are, people are searching for the truth and they're searching for answers. And I, I believe they have two options, right? They're either going to find a substitute in fake truth, lies, and the devil and following their own path, or they're going to find the truth that only comes from God's Word, knowing God, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. But I believe today people are looking. It's why it's so important that you and I, that we stand up for the Word of God, and that we speak truth, and that we show truth with what? With love. Everybody say love. We need to speak to, uh, truth today with love. And so today I want to help you. This is our last topic we're talking about today is this. Why is there so much suffering and evil in the world? You don't have to look far to know there's a lot of suffering and evil in the world. And here's the thing I want you to see today. The problem is this. People don't understand sin. Everybody say sin. People don't understand how powerful sin really is. Small sins, hidden sins, and unintentional sins, intentional sins. I put this up. People don't understand that sin can have immediate and long-term consequences in a person's life and in the world. 
People think that they're just getting away with it. You know, the Bible says this about sin. You know, growing up when I was a teenager in church, people always say, well, well, well sin won't feel good. Sin is not fun. And, I'm like, and I was a teenager and I was, I was sinning intentionally. I'm like, it, it feels good. Sin feels good. Sin is fun. Why does it feel like I've got more friends now that I'm sinning than when I was a Christian? And I'm like, sin feels good and it is fun. But the Bible does say that sin is only fun for what? Right, Miss Carolyn, sin is only fun for a season, and we got to get that today. So here's the thing that we need to understand and do is that this, I want to encourage you today, that you need to trust God's redemptive plan. No matter what kind of suffering you might go through or how evil things might get. You know, people will say, well, the world is going to get better one day or someday. You know, uh, you know, when things are going to change and things are going to get better. I hate to tell you, because according to the word of God, I think it's Matthew chapter 23, 24. Jesus talks about about our world and the, our future and the end times. And he, he says things aren't going to get better or easier, that things are going to actually get worse. And so we need to understand as 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 Christians today about we need to embrace what is God's redemptive plan in the midst of suffering in the midst of the world of evil. And I want to help you today. I want to see, I want to help you understand and see some things about suffering, about evil today. That do, do you know that Job experienced an incredible amount of suffering, but he still trusted God's plan. Job, most of us heard, have heard the story about Job, and I'm going to just do a quick synopsis about Job. And you remember his suffering. When we think about suffering, most of us think about Job in the Bible and the immense, incredible amount of suffering that, that he experienced and that, and that Job went through. Job, Job experienced an incredible amount of blessing. We know this about Job. We know Job was a man of God. We know Job didn't sin. Nowhere do we find that, uh, obviously, he was born a sinner because, he, uh, because of Adam's fall. He was born a senior, sinner. But we, we know this about Job. Job was a godly man, but he experienced suffering. We know this about Job, that Job had a great marriage for a season, for a while. We know that Job had a great family and a, a very large family. Anybody, anybody grown up, grew up in a really large family? Anybody in here? You got a large family, a lot of siblings. We know this about Job. We know that Job had a lot of good friends. Anybody have a good friend or two? couple of you, raise your hand if you got a good friend or two. We know this about Job, that he had a great career. We know Job had incredible amount of wealth. And so we also know this about Job, right? We know in this story about Job and his suffering, we know, we know that Satan went to God and said, God, the only reason why Job has experienced a blessed life is because your hand is on his life and your favor is on his life. And Satan told God, said, God, if you removed your favor and blessing off of his life, Job would surely curse you and walk away. So it's interesting in this story that, that somehow God, sorry, sorry, somehow Satan was able to be in God's presence and, sa- and God gives Satan permission to bring incredible amount of suffering in Job's life with one exception. God says, you can bring suffering in his life, but you cannot do one thing. And what was the one thing that Satan was not allowed to do? What was it? Right, kill him, take his life. God said, Satan, you can do whatever you want in his life. Remember, so Job was a holy and godly man. And God said, you can do whatever, bring whatever suffering you want in his life, but you cannot take his life. You cannot kill him. And so what's interesting about Job is this, right, about his suffering he went through. We know that that his wealth disappeared. We know that his family, most of his family died. Most of his children actually died, right? We know that, that his wife told him to, ter- to, to curse God. Just, just curse God, Job. Just get this over with. We know, that, we know that Job's family laughed at him and they, they, they left him. We know that Job's body was covered with, with blisters and scars and, and, uh, and just boils. And uh, Job, Job suffered a lot. And what, what did Job do during his suffering and his relationship with God? He did a couple of things. Job, Job, Job questioned God why this was happening. Is it okay to question God when you suffer? Absolutely. It is okay to question God. God, why is this happening in my life? And, and Job was asking God, God, why is this suffering? Why am I going through this amount of suffering? And then, then he asked God, God, is there sin in my life? 
And it, it's interesting, and, and the, there's, no, there's nothing in the Bible that, again, that says that Job had sinned. But what Job did, Job, despite his incredible amount of suffering, Imagine overnight or just within a very short span, a week or two. Imagine losing your job. Imagine, imagine your children dying. Imagine lo- your marriage falling apart. Imagine all of your finances disappearing just within a, a very short period of time. And, and Job had experienced all this, but he says one thing. I love Job 13. It says, God might kill me. Job's suffering. God might kill me. Have you ever been there, that level of suffering before? God might kill me. I'm going through something so traumatic, so hard. I'm going through something I don't understand, even though God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I love this about Job, that he trusted in God's redemptive plan. Even though he was going through something tremendous, I don't think any of us in here will ever go through the level of suffering that Job went through. But he still trusted in God's redemptive plan. And because Job did that, what happened? God blessed Job back because he was faithful to God's plan, because he stayed committed to God, because he stayed the course, because he kept putting God first in his life, because he kept seeing God in everything that was happening in his life. And because Job did those things, trusted God's redemptive plan, God blessed Job back twice as much as he ever had before. You want to live a blessed life? You want to live a life that God brings favor in your life? Then you live a life according to God's word, despite whatever suffering that you're going through. And I know some of you have been through some incredible amount of suffering, but you're still holding on to God. You're still trusting God. I remember the day I sat in my grandparents' living room with my grandfather, my grandfather and my grandmother. And, uh, and we're trying to figure out the details for my mom's care and her cancer care. And we, we, we find out that uh, where my mom needed to be at, it was going to cost $8,000 a month out of pocket. The insurance would not pay. And so we're trying to figure out all these details and how we're going to pay for all this and what are we going to do. And, and both my grandparents, my grandmother, my grandfather, incredible golly, golly man, a golly woman. Just, they're just my spiritual heroes, uh, heroes of, of my faith. And so I remember with uh, tears in my grandmother's eyes, and uh, she asked me this question. Where I'm sitting in their living room. She says, do you think God is going to heal your mom, my daughter? And it's interesting. I never in my entire life ever saw my grandparents' faith shaken until this moment. And my response to my grandmother with tears in my grandmother's eyes and tears in my eyes, telling my grandmother, says, Grandma, I don't believe God's going to heal mom on this side of heaven, but I believe she's going to be healed in eternity, and she's going to be cancer-free. I want you to know whatever suffering, whatever pain, whatever level of disappointment or discouragement you're going through, I want you to know keep trusting God's redemptive plan in your, in your life because I believe when you keep holding on to God that you're going to see eventually see a breakthrough even though your heart may be broken right now, even though your spirit may be broken right now. I believe when you keep holding on to God, even if it's with just, just with your fingertips, it's all you have left. You keep holding on to God and keep trusting his plan. I believe that because the word declares it, that when we trust in the Lord, he's going to lead us, he's going to direct us, and he's going to guide us. But we need to get to that point that we, we are trusting God. Are you still willing to trust God despite your suffering? It's so easy to trust God when everything's going right. It's so hard to trust God when everything's going wrong. And so when you learn to trust God, despite that suffering, you're going to say, God, I know you still have a plan. You know, there's another guy we can learn from. His name was Noah. And Noah experienced an incredible amount of evil. Uh, uh, But he still trusted God despite all the evil going on in the world. And let me tell you a little bit about Noah. And Noah was this, right? The world was evil. We know about Noah that, that God spoke to him and God told him, I'm actually going to destroy the world and destroy the earth because of the the amount of wickedness and the evil in the world. And so God told Noah to go and build the ark. And some of us, like we think, well, that Noah built the ark. It happened very quickly. It didn't. That that some people, theologians, believe that it took him almost a hundred years 
between the time he started building the ark and the time he completed the ark and the flood happened. And so over for a hundred years, get this, right? So over a hundred years, Noah warned this culture, warned them of their evil and their sin in their life and the wrong things that they were doing. But yet no one, not a single person, was willing to change and, ret- and leave the evil and leave the sin in their life and follow God. How do we know this? Because I want you to see today that uh, even though Mo- Noah warned these people, they didn't care about their consequences. And I want you to see today, before I share something with you, uh, that, that the Bible talks about, I think it's in uh, 1 John maybe, it talks about when, when Jesus returns back and raptures the church. He, he talks about that, and that the, the, the days are going to be like the days of Noah when Jesus returns and takes the church back. There's going to be an evilness that this world that is going to be thick and deep and wide, there's going to be an evil in this world that, that is going to be heartbreaking. But, but I want you to see today that God still has has a plan. Here's the scripture. Look what God says, right, about the evil in the world during Noah's time. We all think it's bad, right? How many of y'all raise your hand if you think our world is evil right now? Anybody? All of us, right? We all think our world is evil. Look what was happening during Noah's time. It says this, right? It says, the Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on earth. And he saw that everything he thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe the human race I've created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals, the scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. And then he says, but Noah found favor with the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want you to find favor with the Lord. He was the only righteous person who lived on the earth at that time. So think about right now, we have about between seven to nine billion people that live on our planet, right? And so think about when God is looking at your life, if he's, is he looking at your life and saying, I see somebody that's righteous. I see somebody that's hungry for me. I see somebody that is still trusting my plan. That he can look around and say, I see that person still has hope that comes from knowing me. And I believe God wants us to trust his plan today because that's what Noah did. And that's what God wants us to do. Imagine being Noah and living in that kind of wickedness. You think it's bad today. I don't think if the wickedness and evil in our world compares to what Noah experienced. I think we're close. You're like, how bad can it get? I think things that can get actually a lot worse. I think that we're going to see a lot more persecution to the church and towards Christianity. And it's not just going to be Facebook jail, that it may actually mean physical jail, like Paul I experienced in Vietnam that you're actually imprisoned. You're not just a woke culture, but you're, you're, you're a ghosted culture. If you call yourself a man, a woman of God or a man, a woman of faith, that you're going to be the minority and not the majority. God says there's two roads. You know, it says that one road is wide and many walk upon it, but it leads to destruction. And that's our world today. There's a lot of people walking on that road. They don't know they're walking to destruction and wa- they're walking basically to an eternity in hell. But Jesus says that there's this narrow road. And Jesus says that road is a difficult road. It's, it's, it's not easy being a Christian following Jesus. Jesus said this was going to be a difficult thing. But those that stay on that road, that it leads to everlasting life and leads to eternity in heaven with him. And I believe when you and I begin to focus on God and trust his plan, God will do something powerful. God did something powerful in Job's life because he trusted God's plan. God did something powerful in Noah's life because Noah Trust in God's plan. What did Noah do? Noah experienced an incredible amount of blessing because he trusted God's plan despite the evil in the world. Noah's family was protected. The animals were protected. And then God promised Noah that he would never flood the earth again. Are you going to keep trusting God despite the evil in the world? God, though none go with me. Still, come on, finish that sentence for me. Still, I will follow. Though none go with me. Though my, my wife, my brother, my, my, my husband, though, though none go with me, God. 
Still, I'm going to follow you. Still, I'm going to be faithful to the end. God, still, I'm going to put you first in everything in my life. Though the world around me may fall apart and things may change, I may lose a job, I may not have any finances, I may not have good health, whatever it may be. God, I still choose to follow your redemptive plan. So it leads to this question, right? So why is there evil and why is there suffering in the world? I'm going to give you two quick things, and uh, it's not going to be very long. But one of the very first reasons why there's evil and suffering in this world is this, because sometimes suffering and an evil is a result of sin. It just is. You're like, well, how, how is that fair that uh, maybe you didn't sin, but someone else sinned, and you're still paying the consequences? And it's because that's how, that's how attached sin is. We think that when we sin, it just only impacts our life. But it doesn't. Sin leads to death. But sin not only impacts our life, it impacts everything and everybody around us when you and I willingly choose to sin. That's why suffering, that's why when Adam and Eve made a choice to be disobedient in the Garden of Eden, that's why you and I are still paying for it. It's how powerful sin is in our life and in our world. And that's why many times that's why we're experiencing evil and suffering is because of sin. It's because of sin. That's why we're experiencing so much evil and so much suffering. And that's not always, I I said sometimes, not always. Sometimes you experience suffering and evil is not because of sin. A second reason why there's suffering and evil is this, because sometimes suffering and evil is a result of God's redemptive plan. What, how can, how can my brokenness in my body or my sickness in my body, how can the evilness in the world be a part of, of God's redemptive plan. You got to see God maybe didn't create sin. He didn't, uh, he didn't create it, but God allowed free will for humanity to have free will. And so he's allowed sin to happen. But what happens in evil and suffering, but imagine how, think about how many people, maybe some of you in here today, think about how many people have started a relationship with God when they started a relationship with God. Maybe when you start a relationship with God, more than likely it was during a season in your life when you experienced an incredible amount of pain, an incredible amount of suffering, just you, you felt an just incredible amount of evil in the world, but you're like, God, this is the moment that I am going to choose to commit my life to you. I know there's no other way. I've tried a great career in finances. I tried a relationship. All that just fades away. And Lord, now I realize all these horrible things that I've experienced now has led me to finally depend, to get on my knees and to commit my life to Jesus Christ. God has a redemptive plan. I want you to see that today. You may not understand why things do happen, but I will know this. I know God can use that no matter how difficult or how hard that is to bring his name glory in that area. I love it. People are watching you. Do you know that? You're being stalked by your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, your family. They're listening to the, th- the words you're saying. They're, they're watching how you're responding when you're suffering. You're showing them Jesus by your reaction. You're showing them faith. Is your faith and hope really in Jesus or is your faith and hope in money and finances or in government or education? You're showing people that by your actions and your attitude. So your life, your life becomes this story that people are reading and people are watching every day. And that's why when they're watching you go through amount of suffering, they're still seeing you trust Jesus and it points people back to Jesus. That's why you got to understand you need to trust God's redemptive plan. I don't get it why certain things happen in your life. I don't know why God allows that pain. Other than God's trying to work something out you can't see and you don't know. I wish I had this like God's script of exactly what he wants to do in your life. So I can show you, open up the page and show you the next chapter, what God wants to do through that situation through that thing. I wish I could show you that. We have the word of God, but it's not in detail everything God wants to do in your life. But I know I can do this. I can say, as you learn to put your hope and trust in him, I can guarantee you the road's not going to be easy, but I can guarantee you he's going to be with you. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you God is not going to leave you. That he's not going to sleep and watch you suffer. You're not going to be alone that he's with you in that. 
that he is present with you. No matter, no matter how evil things get or how, what kind of suffering you go through, I want you to know today, God is with you. God has not left your side. I want you to see that today. And I also want you to know today, don't listen to the lies of the devil because the devil will try to convince you that God is not good when you're suffering and when you're seeing evil. The devil will try to convince you God doesn't exist because how can a good God allow bad things to happen? How can a good God allow suffering and evil in the world? Again, because we need to understand God has a redemptive plan. You got to remember when the devil tries to lie to you and tell you that God is not good, you got to stand on your faith and say, I know God's character. I know I've experienced experiencing God's character all through my life. I've read about God's character all through the Old Testament and New Testament. I see God's faithfulness is when you stand on God and you hold on to that and you hold on and realize, I know even though there's suffering and even though there's evil, I still know that God is still good. I know he's powerful. And how do I know that? How can you know that God is still good? Because even when there was evil and suffering in the world, that God sent his only son, Jesus, for you. That's why I know and how I know he cares about you because he didn't leave us alone. God would not be a good God if he never sent a son. He just created this world and sort of stepped away and left it be, consume itself. I was talking to somebody on Friday. He walked into the doors and we had bought some, some things from the business next door. And I was talking to him about church and faith and God. Just That's just what I do. I, I, so I, I don't talk about Jesus because I'm a pastor. I talk about Jesus because I love Jesus. And so I was talking to him about Jesus and God. He says, well, I'm just an agnostic. An agnostic. And I'm like, why? Why did you choose to be an agnostic? Why do you choose to be somebody that just, you believe God exists, but that God is so uh, amazing, powerful. We just sort of left the earth and planet and for humanity cons to consume itself. Why? why do you believe that? God sent his son to redeem us and forgive us and we can have a relationship with God again. That's how loving and amazing God is, that he sent his son, Jesus, that he loves you and that he's that good. Man, can you, do you remember the day? Raise your hand if you're a parent. Any parents in here? Do you remember the day you became a parent and held that baby in your arms for the very first time? Do you remember? It's an awesome feeling, wasn't it? It's such an amazing feeling, holding that child in your hand first time. I remember being a dad for the very first time, and holding my son Grant. Woo! Such an exciting day. Something happened deep in my heart that day with the gospel. Because I thought about it. I love my son so much. And he was just born. I can never imagine. I can never imagine giving him to somebody that I know he would be mistreated and abused and killed and slaughtered. The gospel came alive in my heart that day, in that moment. God, that is your love for us. How in the world would you send your only son, Jesus, to die for us when we didn't deserve it? It's because he's that, God is that good. God is that good. Would you, everyone stand with me today? I want to help you to see today. You say, Pastor Dean, how? How do you know that God's good? How can you know that God, how, how, how can you know that God really has a plan for me? How, how is God really that good? I want to share one more scripture. God is so good. And this is how I know God still has a redemptive plan because in Revelation it says this, he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death. There's not going to be any more evil. I don't know how many tears you've cried over somebody or are having a broken heart or whatever's happening in life. I don't want you to know God loves you and cares about you. And he wants to wipe every tear away. And it says this, there's not going to be any more death. There's no more sorrow. There's no more crying or pain. There's not going to be any more suffering in heaven. Anybody ready for heaven? Anybody ready to be there? No more tears. 
There's not going to be an evil thought or evil plan or evil person in heaven. It's going to be a place of righteousness and God's glory and his majesty and hope. It's going to be an awesome place. And it says all these things are going to be gone forever. God has a redemptive plan. He's not going to leave you in that brokenness. He's not going to leave you in your suffering. He's not going to leave you in evil if you learn to put him first and you learn to trust him. With everyone, everyone's eyes bowed today, maybe you've gotten to a place and, and you're just really struggling with, maybe you're feeling God's not good because of the suffering you've been through. Or maybe you look around the world and the world's so evil and the enemy's convinced you that God is not a good God. And today you're seeing that God is a good God and you want to put trust in him again. You want God to heal your heart because you've been suffering. You've been suffering financially, emotionally, physically. You've been suffering emotionally, mentally, whatever it is. But today, you want to put your hope back in God again. You want to put your hope in Jesus through God's Son. If that's you today, with no one looking around, maybe someone watch online, you'll just say, Pastor Dean, that's me. I'm, I'm putting my hope back in Jesus today. I want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for anyone that may have their hands raised. That today, God, they're starting a new relationship because of you, Jesus, in their life. Because, God, of you're so good that you sent your son. And today, Lord Jesus, they're just repenting and they're asking you to come into their life, to forgive them of their sin. And that you would just help them, Lord God. Would you begin to restore some things in their life that the devil has tried to devour, steal, and kill? And that, Lord, would you just bring your goodness in their life? And that, Lord, that you would begin to, you would begin to bring clarity in their life and hope back in life again. Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Carl is coming up, but I just got to say this one more time. I can't let this go. The Holy Spirit's not letting me go. Don't let the devil convince you that God is evil or that God is bad. And it's easy for that to happen because people are so ruthless and mean these days. People are just ugly. I was teasing with Mackenzie before church today. She's going to be a high school student. She's going to be going to high school this fall. And I, I said, Mackenzie, you got to make me and your dad a promise. Please don't turn into one of those mean high school girls. She's like, I'm not. But I want you to know it's easy to think that God is not a good God when you come across mean people and ruthless people. And even some Christians, you think, God, how can you be good? And that's such an evil thing. And I've suffered so much because of that person, what they did in my life. And the devil will convince you, try to convince you, God is not good. Atheists would say, atheists would try to prove that God doesn't exist because an atheist would say, God doesn't exist because if God really existed, how could a God of love allow such hurtful things? How could God allow evil and suffering in this world? That's why God doesn't exist. They'll try to prove to you God doesn't exist. But again, that's why as believers, you got to trust in God's ultimate, ultimate and redemptive plan and realize the Bible says God's ways are not what? Not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so again, it's that level of trust and going back to God. It's like, God, I trust your ways. And God, I trust your thoughts. No matter what I'm going through in my life, I'm going to trust your redemptive plan. And so one last thing before we go, I want you to know that I want you to connect with us. We would connect with you during the week. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, several times a week, I post a devotional that wants to, uh, that will encourage you and inspire you and help you grow spiritually. And uh, I'm online on Facebook. And, but we just want to be a blessing to you. And uh, we'll love to talk to you one-on-one, have coffee with you sometime. Let me know. Uh, again, join us on Facebook uh, during the week on our devotionals, and we want to be a blessing to you. We want you to connect with God, and we want to help you connect relationally and grow spiritually. And so remember, you not only matter to us, but more importantly, you matter to God. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless you.